Well, welcome to Remote Learning and Outdoor Ed. Semester two. And I'm sorry, guys. It, yeah, we're not still there, but it is what it is. So we may as well make the most of the opportunities. The lighting I've got provided by Milwaukee. I've got some good props, so I'm going to teach you a few knots, and then um, we'll see how you go. We can talk about them later. So all you need for this is a bit of rope. So hopefully you can source something or find something around. And uh, we'll start with maybe a simple one. This is the figure eight. So you go around and then back through itself. And it should look just like that. And that's the basis for another one that we'll do in a minute called a rethread figure eight. So once you've mastered that one, I'll do it again. So it goes around itself. And then back, back up and through. Very good. Now, what you need to do if you haven't allowed enough, which I haven't, is feed a bit of rope through. So you get about a metre of tail. You might need slightly less. Put some props here. Handy high chair that was around. And a bit of rope. So we just dag it over the top or you could tie it around something so hopefully you can see and you've got the pattern of the rope going out that way you just follow it back and some have said it's like a car just following itself around the racetrack so do that follow it all the way around and the beauty of this one is it's really easy to check Visually, you can see if it's right. If it's nice and, and even, it should look like that. And that's how you tie into a climbing harness. So it's a pretty handy knot to know. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll pause it there for a minute. Okay, here we go. Take take two. So it's this, people. Took me a little while to organise my props, but we're sorted. This is probably the most handy knot you um, you'll ever need. It's the one you tie when you've got your car stuck, and you can pull the rope pretty tight. And maybe you'll get it back under. Um, the advantage of the bow line, the knot I'm about to teach you, is that it, you can un unload it at tension, and um, it it's pretty strong. You do need to check it a little bit, but let's see how we go. So the bowline, so you can tie it around something, or loop it around, but you just need something to do it around. Then take your thumb and just coil up one loop. You can see that. Then my analogy, and credit to Jason on the last one there, my analogy is the rabbit goes through the hole, so under some underground tree root that may be there around and then back up through the hole and then if we can see that one it's nice and clear now that I'll can take it off to the camera so that is a pretty good bowline it can slip at times so if you're wary you can put in a keeper knot just like an overhand knot if I had a bit more room I'd do too that should make it a little bit more secure. But that's a really strong knot, and you can always get it undone. No matter how, how tight it's pulled. So the bowline. It will get you out of situations that are... It's a handy knot to know. Handy knot to know. I don't know where I come up with that stuff, but it, it is a good knot. It'll get you out of trouble. This one is very handy for tying stuff onto a trailer. It's called a clove hitch. You also use it climbing a bit. But to stop the leaves blowing out of grandma's trailer or whatever like that, if you can tie down a load, it's going to be a, to your advantage. So this one, if you can drop it over something, it's very simple. You can do it like this. I'll try and do it to the camera. One loop. Two loops tuck them in beside or behind each other. 
It's cleavage. So if it's got something you can just drop it over, it's remarkably simple. But if it's like a rail on a trailer, you can't. So you just got to thread it the right way. So hopefully you can see. So you wrap it around, you bring it up, and then you go back through. It's hard to find enough descriptive words to tie knots, but that's the cleavage. So I'll do it once again. So you bring it around the rail, bring it up over it, over itself, make a loop, and then tuck it in. If you've got more tail so you, this bit's not smashing around on the road, just keep tucking it in. Then, so you actually had to tension the load on grandma's leaves. Move my props to the place. Good. Alright. Bear with me. There we go. So it's one side of Grandma's trailer. Done. Clove hitch just there, sort of. Other side of Grandma's trailer here. So pop it around the rail. Pop it around the rail. Not allow for enough rope to come into your milk crate. Right, we're watching. Grab here. You bring that bit underneath. Just move around to this side. Confused yet? Now it's really simple. You just loop it with your thumb up and away from you and poke that loop through. Make sure you've got quite a bit of loop. And this is what they call a truckies hitch. So it's a good way to rip the legs off a baby high chair. So I won't do that. With too much tension, but uh, that's a pretty handy one, and that wasn't a great explanation. But you can source one online, but you should be able to sort that out pretty good. And we'll talk about that in the WebEx. Last one, so that's a trucker's hitch, bowline, re thread figure eight. And the last one's an alpine butterfly. I like this one. So you put the rope over your hand. Not once, not twice, but thrice. One, two, three. We grab this one, it's closest to our fingers, and we bring it and we put it near our thumb. Pretty simple, isn't it? Then we grab the next one, we get it, and we tuck it under the other two. Neaten it up a bit, takes a little bit of fluffing around. There you go, Alpine Butterfly. Non climbing uses, it's not that handy, but it's a nice knot. You can tie stuff into it and make things directional. That's for another time. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Knots part two.